Hi everybody, my name is Michaela and y'all might know me as Nurse Michaela K on all these crazy social medias. Um, I am a nurse, <clears throat> surprise. I have my BSN and RN and I'll go into the differences about that in a little bit, but I'm here to present to you what it's really like to be a nurse. So let's get started. I'm gonna start with, oh, there we go. This is a little bit, oh, this is kind of my journey. A lot of photos of me, I know, I'm sorry. Um, I started out as a lifeguard actually. And then in high school, I was offered a program as a firefighter. So it was two years and um, I was a firefighter EMT after I graduated from high school. So the top you'll see me kind of in my bunker gear. And then at the bottom, um, I did some ride outs. And then when I was in college, I worked as an EMT down in Texas, if anybody's an Aggie whoop. Um, and then I also volunteered because I wasn't getting a lot of drama at Texas A&M with all these healthy 18 to 22 year olds. So I volunteered in Houston where I got all of the drama. And then I um, became a nurse in San Antonio. Um, <clears throat> I went to Texas A&M nursing school and in the top left, you can see my scroll ceremony with my mentor. And we had to wear these horrible white scrubs. But when you graduated, you got to wear the nice maroon ones. And then um, I applied for a graduate nurse program, which doesn't mean like masters. It means when you come out of nursing school, you uh, have to, well, some, some hospitals do and sometimes they don't. You are basically in an orientation period ranging depending on what specialty you have. Um, <clears throat> and mine was 16 weeks because I was in the ER. It is very hard to kind of get an ER job outside of like when you'd graduate immediately, but I found out quickly why they hired me because they needed more nurses because I already kept quitting, but it's fine. I learned so much uh, in that first job that I really think it set a solid foundation for my future and where I'm at now. Um, and then the bottom right, if you can see that, that is New Year's last year, we were doing COVID at Vanderbilt and those are non-alcoholic. So don't, don't worry. We wish they were, just kidding. So uh, why nursing? Um, the reason I like nursing, number one, is because of the type of care that you get to do. You are more hands-on and you actually interact with the patient a lot many different ways, very up close and personal sometimes, sometimes too close and personal, but you really get to talk to your patients, you get to know the families and you get to care about the whole person. There's so much more to nursing that I didn't realize. Like I braided my patient's hair a couple of days ago, like who knew you needed to know how to braid or um, sometimes, you know, they cry to you. So you have to be their therapist and you just like get yourself in situations that you're like, I didn't know that this is part of the job. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just kind of what nursing is. Um, another thing is you work three days a week, which is super nice. You get four days off to, well, mostly sleep for me sometimes, um, do TikTok, but um, it can be very convenient to only work three days a week, but sometimes you got to be careful because your week will start on Sunday and end on Saturday. So the two weeks they can count as like, if you work Thursday, Friday, Saturday, then you can work Sunday, Monday, Tuesday for your next week. So you can get like six days in, but I've taken some pretty good vacations by arranging my um, schedule in a way that I can take six days off and go on all these crazy vacations, which I love. Um, intellectually stimulating. I absolutely love learning about the body. I love being able to discuss with doctors the disease processes of people, and I am constantly learning there are stuff that I still don't know. Obviously, with all my quizzes that I'm doing, I'm just learning so much, and I really, really enjoy it because just the human body is insane. Um, the schooling, it's only two to four years, which is awesome compared to doctors. Doctors have eight years and then sometimes even more and I'm just like I'm not into it and every doctor I've ever told me was like I wish I didn't do this I wish I was a PA or a nurse practitioner I mean they loved being a doctor ultimately but a lot of them would have preferred going like the nurse route the nurse practitioner route which is cool um, and then there's like a lot of different avenues so you can become a nurse practitioner um, there are different specialties if you don't like the one that you're in um, there's just a lot, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, my nursing journey, like I said, 
So I started out in 2018. I worked in the ER down at Metropolitan Methodist Hospital. This picture is on top of our hospital. We were getting a patient that was flown in. Um, then I worked at a standalone ER because they paid a little bit more. So a standalone urgent care. And then I actually got furloughed when uh, COVID happened because there was that point in Texas that nobody was going into our standalone ER. So they had to let nurses go. Um, and then I actually got a job at Vanderbilt, but right before Vanderbilt, I decided to do a travel nurse stint in Texas. So I did travel nursing at a level two in Houston, which was so fun. <laughs> I had a great time. Um, and then Vanderbilt, I worked there in the ICU. I decided to change because I was looking at maybe being a nurse anesthetist. So you have to have ICU experience for that. Vanderbilt is a level one. I don't know if you've heard of it before, but it's basically where everybody, everybody comes. Everybody's flown in from like Florida, Georgia, Virginia, just we have all kinds of patients. And then after my year of Vanderbilt, I decided to be a travel nurse again. So right now I'm working in a tiny little town in Gallatin, Tennessee, and my contract will be up here in a couple of weeks. And then I'll be going who knows where, maybe Hawaii, maybe Houston. So we'll see. Um, how to you become a nurse? <laughs> this is not a real picture of me after three weeks of nursing school, but it sure felt like it. <laughs> I, uh, there are three different routes that you can, if you haven't heard of licensed vocational nurses or licensed practical nurses, they are, um, they don't have control of giving medications and doing like nurse assessment plans. They work under and with nurses, but if you, are trying to go back to school and you don't have, you know, as much time or, you know, financially, if you needed to, you could go back for one year. It's a one-year degree at community college. And then RN is registered nurse, which is kind of different than BSN um, in the sense that it's anybody who's an RN can have either a two-year associate's degree or four years bachelor's degree but some people who just have RN only have a two year associate's degree and it can be from a community college or a nursing uh, college and accredited university. Um, but the BSN is what a lot of hospitals and a lot of jobs are looking for, especially if you wanna go further, uh, which is what I have, Bachelor of Science of Nursing. It's a four year bachelor degree at an accredited university. And something that I didn't know till I got into it was you're not in the nursing program until you finish your prereqs, which would be can, like the first two years that you would go, you have to finish your prereqs and then you apply to get into nursing school. I don't know if that's how they did it at all the universities, but that's how they did it to mine. So I actually had a point in my schooling where I had finished all my prereqs and I didn't need to do anything and they didn't let me apply until spring. So I just took a semester off and I backpacked across Europe by myself and it was incredible. <laughs> So that was a, a good opportunity for me, but now I know, so I can warn you guys. Um, after you get your BSN or your RN, then you take the NCLEX, the dreaded NCLEX that is very difficult. And all the stuff that you learn from that is not stuff that you use in real life, but you gotta prove that you have some knowledge. So you take your NCLEX um, and then after you definitely pass it, then I, like I said, you apply to the graduate nurse programs and I would go to hospitals that have them because you know you are dealing with real people and their lives and it's you need a guide i promise you need a guide i've i've seen things myself where it's just it can be dangerous so the more time you have with somebody showing you what to do the better definitely and then you just work in your specialty um so if i hadn't gotten the er i probably would have gone for med surge it's kind of um it's the roughest toughest <laughs> specialty because you have five patients and you have a lot of medicine to give but you really do learn a lot and then typically after six months of working in one specialty then you can move on to other specialties that you want so for me I luckily got ER immediately um definitely definitely learned quickly <laughs> but I had the graduate nurse program which I'm really grateful for so here are some of the different floors that you could work on. Um, there's also home health and many different, at Vanderbilt, they had five different ICUs. So you could specialize in cardiac, neuro, um, trauma even, trauma is crazy. 
Uh, and then, you know, PACU, PACU is wonderful. That's, that's post anesthesia unit. So you just wake people up, which is pretty nice. <laughs> Mostly get one patient for 30 minutes and you send them on their way. Love it. <laughs> Oncology, hard floor. Um, I've given chemo once, but it, it was like preset. It's just crazy. I couldn't do it, but you know, there's just a lot of different places that you could go. And there's some surprising places that you could go that you, that aren't even on this list. So like a triage nurse at the bottom there where you stay at home and people will, you call people and they call, or they call you and then you tell them if they should go to the hospital or not, or um, you call people to educate them. Travel nurse, that's what I do. Typically it's two years in your specialty. Some crazy things have been going on this last year where they're I've heard of a few baby that's what, baby nurses going out and traveling, and that is just not a good idea because, like I said, it's people's lives that you're dealing with, and it's normally a hospital that's in distress. So you really got to know what you're doing to go out there. Um, one to two years. Mine was two years, but there's there's a lot of opportunity for pay in travel nurse. You can I know some people that are making six figures, and and there there might be a three on the first <laughs> in the first digit placeholders. So there's a lot of money in travel nursing, especially right now. Um, I've seen contracts for ranging from 4,000 a week to the max I've seen is like 7,000 a week, unless you work like 60 hours, five days, and that can be all the way up to $10,000 a week. It's actually crazy. Then you could go to your nurse practitioner. That takes about two to three years. It's your master's, or you can be in education. Um, nurse anesthetist is going into a doctorate and you need some extra certifications to do to get there, like your critical care RN certification. Um, flight nurse, which is people that could either be transferring from hospital to hospital, or they could go out into the field and pick somebody up. Or you can have fixed wing flight nurse, which is like you're on a plane and you're taking somebody overseas. And then I talked about the triage nurse, pros and cons, <laughs> pros help people. That's what 10 out of 10 people person's answer is when they are asked why they want to be a nurse, which sounds cheesy, but honestly, it's, it's true. You want to, you want to help people. Um, like I said, the connections with the families, I love that I can see when people improve. That is something in the ER, I didn't really get as much, but when you literally save somebody's life, that is just so interesting and wonderful to watch. And then, like I said, there's many opportunities to, to grow and go. Cons, you got to work on the weekends and on holidays. <laughs> Hate that. <laughs> but, you know, you got to do it and you get paid more for it. Um, a lot of the times when you start, you do have to start on night shifts. Some people like it. It is very interesting to be awake during the nighttime. I'm on nights right now, so I have a night schedule. And it can be emotionally very difficult. Um, we, I have a lot of humor to help with all of my problems, but you know, you can, you see the family, it's really the family that really gets you, especially during COVID, it, like we didn't expect this. So it's just been difficult. And then, you know, seeing the patients go through what they're going through, you're just, you're so hands-on that you start to feel like a family member yourself. So it can be, be difficult. Day in my life, um, since I'm night shift, I wake up at 3.30 p.m. I have to clock in. It's kind of a far drive for me, so I drive like an hour and a half. There's normally a huddle in the beginning where, where everybody talks to each other and um, just kind of gives pointers for the day, reminders of what we're trying to accomplish or like who the critical patients are so that we can keep our eye out. Uh, I get report. Normally, it's two ICU patients, but since the hospital is smaller and we don't, we're understaffed, um, Sometimes we can have three patients, but people will work together. I'll do an assessment at 8 p.m. So that's listening to the heart and lungs, going from their head to the toe, checking their IVs. And we, we pay attention to how much fluid is going in and out of patients in the ICU, um, just to see if their kidneys are working or if they're, if they're needing more fluid. And then also we do mouth and Foley care uh, if they're intubated and then Foley care just to prevent infection. You can pass meds before an hour of the due time and an hour after. So I'll pass them between, I'll give them between nine and 11. And then I assess again at midnight and 4 a.m. At six, I empty the Foley, prepare my report, and then I give my report to the day nurse. And this is, would be a perfect day, but they definitely don't always <laughs> end up that way. So <clears throat> this is just kind of an idea, but you're really like 
constantly monitoring, especially in the ICU, you are watching your patient and you really have so much control over how they will be doing because you have one doctor to all of your patients basically that day. So you really have a lot of say and autonomy in the care of patient. I've definitely told doctors to give me certain meds before and I just, you know, you've got to get that good relationship with them. Um, so what is it like to be a nurse in COVID? Crazy. <laughs> it's been crazy. Um, somebody put it really well and I was thinking about it this way too. When we go into healthcare, we want to help people. With COVID, it, we can't help people. We don't have a cure. And typically you see them go from, from nasal cannula to a BiPAP mask, which nobody can ever tolerate, it's too much, and then they get intubated and then there's really no cure. There are a couple of people that do get better, but ultimately um, it's, it's more detrimental. And as an ICU nurse, especially, I see I see it all. I see the worst of the worst at Vanderbilt, see the worst of the worst. So the reason we got into healthcare is to help people. COVID's not letting us do that. So that's why it's been very difficult. Um, we have had a couple miracle cases. We had one guy for four months through Thanksgiving, his birthday and Christmas. He was on ECMO, which is basically a machine that is externally, like you've got a, basically a hose coming from your neck to the machine, an oxygenator that comes back to your femoral artery. And if your heart stopped, you would still survive because it's basically doing all the work for you, either for your heart or your lungs. And in COVID, it was the first time that we ever started doing double ECMO. So this man was on double ECMO for four months. And he, anytime he moved, his blood pressure would tank. He was on a lot of drips and all this stuff. But he ended up getting lungs and he ended up surviving. And he was 39 years old with no no comorbidities. So that is what we need to see to just keep going. Um, and these days, everybody is a little bit younger. It is 30s to 40s that we're seeing. So I feel like a couple of them are getting better, but it's, you know, it's still not great. So um, I'm vaccinated and I got COVID. For me, it wasn't terrible. I lost my sense of taste and smell. Um, but I still, I'm glad that I'm vaccinated. I'd probably get the booster if they would offer it again, just, just because of what I've seen my coping skills. Um, I like to make fun of myself. <laughs> I laugh with my nurse friends and, you know, we joke around and that's really how I do it. And I also just talk to people. My poor family hears all my stories about what's going on and that's how I cope. And most importantly, I have outside hobbies from nursing. When I leave the hospital, I leave the hospital and I do other things that make me happy. So uh, my advice for you, just in general, don't let your whole life be your job. A lot of people do spend, you know, six days a week at the hospital to make that overtime, but it just, it's not what you were made to do. You were made to be there for your time and then find something outside just so that you can survive and be happy. Um, don't give up on your dreams. As you can see in this picture, I have applied and finally got a slot to be an Air Force pilot. Yes, I will still be a nurse as an Air Force pilot because it's the reserves, but I wanted to get my flying, my pilot's license and I did. And I wanted to be a pilot and I did. And it took me two years to do it, but here I am on that journey. Uh, so that goes into if you're unhappy, you can change it. I didn't really like where I was when I was an ER nurse for that one year. I was like, man, my literal whole life has led up to this, but I am not happy. And I asked other nurses, I said, are you happy? They're like, I'm not happy. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm glad we're all on the same page. But then since it took so long to, to get to the Air Force pilot position, I had to go to another another hospital and I've experienced other floors and I'm actually very happy where I am. And I, I really enjoy the people I work with. So I'm grateful that it did take so long. Um, but if you are unhappy, you can change it. Also look up the requirements for your dream job now. For you guys that want to be pediatricians, look up and see what, what groups they want you to be in. You can join certain um, 
like big old groups like there's the critical care nurse group that you can join that's a yearly subscription and just it will set you up for success if you look now even though it seems so far away just get ahead of it definitely listen to those who've come before you lots of smart doctors listen to the nurses that have been nurses for 20 years because they know a little something something about what they're talking about if you want to be a nurse listen to the nurses ask questions there's just a lot of knowledge that they can have and mostly from mistakes that we've made. I've got plenty that I could talk about, but definitely, definitely listen and always keep learning. That's the last thing. And that's it. That's me a, on a rock <laughs> in Norway on my vacation when I had that semester off. This is actually a Tinder date, fun fact. But um, if you guys have any questions, I can answer them. And then that's my, if you want to follow me on Instagram and look at some some quizzes that I do on my stories if you want to know some more medical stuff.